since the previous video, when this thing was only a receiver, I've made some progress, including a transmitter inside the box. I initially wanted to use the oscillating regenerative detector for the transmitter's local oscillator as well. However, I found that its output was very low unless the regeneration control was advanced. I could have put in a resistor and some switching arrangements to change the position of the regeneration control on transmit and receive, but it seemed too much effort. Instead, I built a separate one transistor ceramic resonator oscillator and had it independently adjustable. The benefit of that is that the transmitter and the receiver can operate on separate independent frequencies. If you find interference from an adjacent station that you need to retune the receiver to dodge, then you can do that without changing your transmit frequency. The main disadvantage though is that you need to spot the transmitter on the receiver every time you want to call a station on their frequency. If you wish to call CQ, you tune around on the receiver for a clear frequency. Then you press the spot button and you tune the transmitter until you hear an 800 Hz tone. Also, I've found there's a bit of drift involved because I'm using a ceramic resonator. However, it's still enough to make contacts and with a tuning range of around 100 kHz, it covers the entire CW end of the band plus more. Here's a look at the circuit. The receiver section is as described before, no real changes there, just modified from the F5 LVG design with the ceramic resonator added. Down below, here's the transmitter section, a BC548 and a second ceramic resonator oscillator only used during transmit. A two transistor buffer stage. This is the same circuit as used by N3ZI in his DDS VFOs. And finally, a final amplifier using a BD139. Output power, about a watt. The transmit receive switching is a double pole double throw switch. One section switches the antenna connection and the only part common to this circuit is the low pass filter between the antenna and the transmit receive switch. Just a 7 MHz low pass filter there. Its power switching section switches between the transmit stages and the receive stages. The entire transmitter is off when you are in receive mode and vice versa. What you see here at the top, you might not be able to see it, but just bridging across these connections is the spot switch that allows you to listen to the transmit's local oscillator when you're in receive mode. I did experiment with the value for this resistor from the base to the collector of the transmitter ceramic resonator oscillator. It was at 220k, but I found that produced a bit of drift when you went from receive to transmit. So I increased its value to 4.7 meg and it seemed to reduce the turn on drift a little bit. The output seemed to be unaffected. The capacitor values here around the culprits oscillator are set so you get a good frequency coverage with this resonator. I get about 7 to a bit above 7.1 megahertz, so similar to the receiver. If you don't want to cover all of that range and you want to make tuning a bit easier, then put in a parallel capacitor across this variable capacitor that will cut back the top end of the tuning range, which you probably don't need for a CW transmitter. We'll switch to transmit and put out a few CQ calls.
That's VK2CCW who's replied to a CQ call from me. One feature not highly praised enough with homebrew receivers is their very low current consumption. Here I'm using a battery pack giving about 13 volts. Holding the crystal earpiece up to the camera so there's no subsequent amplification apart from the three transistors in the receiver, it's drawing 2.3 milliamps. On transmit, it goes up to about 45 milliamps, that's with the transmitter buffer switched in. Press the key and just under 150 milliamps. The average power on transmit, because the key isn't down all the time, would be maybe 100 milliamps or a bit less. So there we have it. A transceiver that puts out about 1 watt draws an average of around 100 milliamps on transmit and barely 2 milliamps on receive. You'd get extremely long battery life out of something like this. Whereas an FT817, even on receive alone, would draw three times as much power as this does on transmit. Regen receivers have been out of favour for use in amateur stations for many decades. Yet this experiment shows they're still practical. It's a little bit fiddly to operate this transceiver, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for fast-paced DX or contest type QRPing. However, for casual contacts, using one can be great fun. If you want to know more about QRP operating, equipment, antennas and technique, don't go past Minimum QRP. If you haven't got yours yet, it's available from Amazon, just search Minimum QRP for under $5 US.